Hello everyone and welcome to another day here on the CryptoCraft server. Today, we're going to be building a bit of an invention, sort of. Hmm, how do we do this? Let's see here. It's been a bit since I've been with Tesseracts again. We want to lock it to owner only. And we want to definitely make it something, something different. Yeah, no, neither of those actually. I don't know, just do 352, 353, and we'll name it... Comb processor. There. It's now set to that frequency. Okay, good. Yes, what we're going to be doing today is using a bit of a machine that I made off screen, which I'm going to show you. But first, the thing we're going to use it with is the Ignis Queen. This thing creates fiery combs. I've dealt with those a little bit before. It's the kind of comb that you need to kind of, uh, it makes a propolis that you then have to put back through the centrifuge. For that, I could either make another golem, or just simply hook this machine up into an existing setup that I use rather infrequently, but here it is. It's already set up to accept things. Right now it's doing static combs. Basically, the, uh, the products go in a loop. It sends everything I don't need into a void pipe, things that I need to centrifuge again go in there, and they end up up here. Those fiery combs, I want to get going straight into this system. So, the easiest way to do that would be to either... Well, what's on the other side of this centrifuge? Because I don't exactly need all these machines here, especially not this one. Alright. I just want to make sure that I don't accidentally do something silly and pump it into the squeezer, for example. Well, the easiest way for that to not happen would be if the squeezer was already totally filled. Then it wouldn't be able to put any products into the squeezer, and then there wouldn't be an issue. And I think that might be the easiest solution right here. Where is the chest containing the honey drops? There they are. Yep. I think this is a bit of a, a, of a, bit of a hack solution. <laughs> Just making sure that the Tesseract cannot pump into anything adjacent to it whatsoever, simply due to an overflow of items and everything around it. But I really don't use this thing that much anyway. Yeah, no matter what I do, this next Tesseract is going to have to go right here. Alright, so the next step in the line of processing would be to make sure that this one is also set to that frequency. So we lock it down to owner only, and then we tell it, yes, you are now being comb processed. Uh, we want it to only be send only. No, receive only, I think. Still nothing coming through, of course, because I haven't hooked it up yet. Bit of trial and error never hurt anyone. I always say that's the best way to learn in life, because when I screw up the first time, it's not my fault. That's to be expected. Send only. Yes, the other ones receive only. Now get out of the way, little golem. I know that you have jobs to do, but I also have very, very interesting things that I need to have accomplished here. Now, this one should be items in inventory. Ooh, no output links. Interesting, I didn't realize that this... Uh, Energy pulse. Yeah, that's fine. So now it'll just pulse forever, waiting for a fiery comb. To test that out, I'll put the one fiery comb I have. No, I need this to, to tell the other emerald pipes what to do. No, no, I don't. No, I don't. Okay. We'll chuck the fiery comb in there. And if it worked, this pipe will suck it into the Tesseract. And now we can check in the hopper if indeed that worked the first time. And it did. Okay. So, this Tesseract is going to shove it right into the centrifuge. It's going to brrrp like that and output fire shards. Now, I'm actually going to need a few more Tesseracts now that I think about this for everything, but let's do it all one step at a time. Alright, so the next step is there needs to be a Tesseract right here. And furthermore... I'm going to need an emerald pipe right here. Now, I don't want those two to connect. That will screw everything up. 
indubitably. So, to get that to not connect there, I think all I need to do is grab one of these facades and put it in between the pipes. That should cause them to not connect anymore, I hope. In the meantime, I'll just break this. Put the pipe down. Good. Add a facade on it. Good. And then finally... Oh no, it goes through the facade! Hmm. It's a good way to get pipes to not connect. Probably just put them other places. I could have it going off across the ceiling, but that might look ugly. Right? I don't want to look ugly in my base. Hmm. Let's think about this problem for a minute. Everything is getting a little bit crunched down in here, isn't it? Would it be the worst thing in the world if I had the Tesseract that I want to use there? Hmm. Suppose not, but it would be cleaner if it was in the wall, you know. Hmm. Interesting that I can't... I suppose... Hmm. I thought facades made pipes not connect with each other. I guess that's not the case. And that's why I had to do a loop like that in the first place. Okay. Hmm. So how would we do this? I am not technically using any of those machines in the back anymore. I could simply remove the pipe. Well, I suppose I am using some of them. And they are aesthetically pleasing. All right, then. Can't exactly pull the pot. I wonder if... I wonder... Hmm. One not bad solution might simply be to put the emerald pipe in the ceiling with the tesseract next to it and then use a facade. But first, we really need to make sure it's pointing in the right direction. Yes, it is. Okay. And the next step, then, is to add the Autarctic Gate. No. The next step is to tell this pipe what it wants to do. Because we have a lot to hook up today, my friends. Yes, we do. Fire shards are what we are after. It takes a while to process fiery combs, so I'm not really too concerned about time. Oh, that's wrong. Not yet, Mr. Little Thingy. I know you want to get into place very, very soon, but it'll be all right. Hmm. Yes. Okay. For now, only fire shards. They are the most uh, energy efficient method, I think, of doing this. We'll tell it uh, items in inventory, energy pulse again. Good. Oh, shoot. Yeah. That's what I should have expected happening. There is no exit to this pipe just yet. In fact, there's a lot of fire shards in there, so maybe I should think about a different way of doing this. Although once there is, you know, not that many fire shards, this will work out. Okay. So, I'm going to need to tell this Tesseract to do something even differenter. If that's a word, I'm sure it is. Okay, so here we have my five hybrid ultimate solar panels, right? They go straight into the... Matter Fabricator. That's where most of my power is going. That's fine. What I need to do is set up this, the Magic Energy Absorber. A very special block that, as you look at the recipe, will get increasingly and increasingly expensive. You see, guys? It took my two beacons to make this block, so we better be getting some serious power out of this sucker. And that's what we're hooking up today. So, it only outputs 128 per tick, but that's okay. It'll convert the fire shards into pure energy. Or, if I tell it to, it can also convert Vs from the aura, or if there are ender crystals nearby, but good luck beating a dragon without any of those. Alright, so, all we need to do is grab this energy, this item Tesseract, 
and put it on top. Now I haven't told the frequency what frequency to look for yet, of course. And the other thing to consider is what should the output be, because I definitely want to be chucking something into this block here. But it doesn't necessarily need to be a tesseract, does it? Could be an ender chest, because... Yes, there is going to be a variety of items, isn't there? A large variety of items. Dull shards, perhaps? Perhaps even... Hmm. Books that I want to disenchant? Those are all very good candidates for what I'm building here. Yes. Alrighty, let's build an ender chest or two. That wouldn't be so bad. Ender chests. How do you make those again? Let's have a quick little scoop up in our examination. An ender chest is built, as always, with four blaze rods, two obsidian, a couple ender pearls. Okay, I'm only going to need two of them. Quite obviously. Which is great, because that's what I have right there. Now, that means I'm going to need eight blaze rods, but that's, again, a very simple problem to fix. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm very, very careful with this drill. I've managed to blow up my entire uh, barrel more times than I care to admit. Alright, so the next step is uh, two obsidian, which would be four obsidian when you consider that that way. Alright, and finally, what? What's the last piece? Oh, right, a couple pieces of wool. We should have some wool around here somewhere. White will be fine. Before I hook it up, uh, it'll probably attach to something I don't want to attach to. So we're going to be very careful with that. All right. You're probably thinking, Fwip, why are you going to all the trouble to build something like this? Well, honestly, by now, fun! If it's not fun, don't do it. Has anyone ever mentioned that to you? It's a very, very good rule to have. And I definitely stand by it. That's probably one reason why I don't play on HC server that much anymore. It's just not as fun to have a bunch of people stalk me all day trying to get in videos now that I've become a little bit more known. Not that I have an ego problem, it just seems to have been something that happened over time. Alright, so, yes, I didn't link this to anything yet, did I? Lock it in place, we'll name it, I don't know, 355, we'll call it, what will we call it? Uh, energy drain. There. Oh, and we also have to tell it. Send only, yes. I know that I could probably only do send and receive, because that way there would be no danger because they're only sucking in one direction or pulling or whatever, but I'd rather be, you know, risk-proof. This one, of course, needs to be locked and set to energy drain as well. And then sent to receive only. There, so anything, all the fire shards will get sucked into this thing. And what happens to fire shards in there? Have a look. Nothing. Really? Nothing? What about if it was one at a time? Hmm. Am I doing this backwards? Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's not very nice. Okay, it seems that I've mixed up the, the items. I thought the en magic energy... You know, absorber or converter. I thought they were just simply interchangeable. Or upgraded versions of themselves. I hate the rain. One moment. Okay, so it turns out that the magic energy converter is what I was looking for. Not its upgraded form for this silly fire shard setup. Oh, good god. Alright, um... What am I looking for right now? Alright. Dissipation charges. I hate the rain. Although, apparently, according to some people, when I was fighting the Hydra, that's what allowed me to not be set on fire all the time. Which is nice and everything, but again, I suppose rain does have a function in this game, but I still say that for all intents and purposes, it's far too often for me. 
It's been a bit since I need to use that device anyway. All right. That means I'm going to need to get another another star. Well then, suppose this small project will lay uh, dormant for a bit until I grab another nether star, which shouldn't take that long. So in the meantime, we'll leave this set up the way it is and finish... I suppose I can't really do that, can I? What can we do instead, then? The magic energy absorber does pull enchantments off of things. That's entirely the point. The issue is that this Tesseract here can't actually do anything with the fire shards. Because I grabbed the wrong machine. So that means this one here needs to be destroyed. And replaced at a later date when it's fixed. Everything else is going fine. It's just this little link in the chain doesn't work. So. That would mean that wherever I want to put items in, like enchanted books or things, this is still going to work. Don't get me wrong. This kind of does suck a bit. However, I believe I can get it to work the way that I want it to at least half the time. I'll still need a different fire shard setup, which is not... Ideal, but whatever, that works. Okay, so, basically, hmm, there's nothing down here, is there? No, it looks uh, fairly empty and stuff. So, what I could do is have a chest here, going down to here. Oh, I got lucky, there's nothing there. Alright, so, in that case, what we'll do is we'll grab our item tesseract, leave it here, tell it to be private, Tell it to be energy drain. Yes. Okay. That's fine. And we're just going to use a wooden pipe, actually. Probably going to need to use a uh, another chest, all things considered. But that's fine. Where's the nearest crafting table? All right. You're probably thinking, Flip, what in the world are you doing now? Well, let's just say there's been a lot of books that have got disjunction on. And I don't see any use for that enchantment whatsoever. If you're wondering what it does, it does X. It's basically like Smite, only for Endermen and Wither Skeletons. Again, I still don't see a point in getting that instead of the other enchantments that I would like to have. So, keeping that in mind, this will be a little setup to automatically turn whatever enchantments I don't want into profit. And by profit, I mean like... Okay, let's see here. Items in inventory. Redstone's energy pulse. Yes, okay. There we go. So basically, we'll be able to take the books that I don't want, drain them, and shove them back here. That's fine. That's dandy. All right. So some of the ways that I need to do this are to grab some dye and make sure that I have a frequency on my ender chest that no one else has. Do I have any dyes? Yeah, I've got two yellow and a couple red. Oh, that'll be fine. I mean, it's... I guess a couple green. Or lime. No one uses lime. That'll be good. Okay, I'm ready to do this. So, we're gonna test this out on some books that I don't like. My inventory's totally full, though. Let's go recycle some things. Oh, goodness me. Little teeny tiny steps. But they are incredibly necessary. <laughs> Always make sure that your stuff is set up correctly before making some crazy invention like this. Okay, so once a book goes through the energy absorber, it's going to come out the side. So we're going to want to grab a wooden pipe and attach that wooden pipe just to an ender chest. And that'll be fine and dandy and really, really good. But the ender chest needs to be coated correctly. Else, uh, we're going to have a problem on our hands. So we're going to make it yellow, red, lime. Yeah. And there's nothing already in it, so that tells me that it, this is a fine frequency to use. Put an Antarctic gate on here. Tell it that when there's items in inventory. Eh, oh, whoops. Yep, mm. Come on now. 
Energy pulse. That worked, right? Items in inventory, energy pulse. Yes, there's nothing in it right now because it didn't res Oh, I didn't do this right, did I? Receive only. Yes, I did. So this will chuck things into the energy absorber. And they will come back out. Simple, right? Wonderful. I hope. I'll just, uh, whoops. Cover this all up again. Oh, my goodness. The double block placements. One. 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 Fine. Dandy. Great. Okay. So, we'll head back inside. <laughs> How to build things with Fwiv. Step one. Do it wrong. Step two. Figure out the way to do it right. And, and don't freak out. So... Where should the ender chest where everything is finished come out of? Oh, well, I'm not using right here in, anymore, so... Right there is good. I think I did yellow, red, green, right? I think I did. Yellow. Red. Green. These are... S okay, I gotta say. I'm a real fan of these uh, new ender chests rather than the other ones. You can just use so many possibilities with it. Seriously, it's one of the best things. So, what enchantments don't I want? Let's say I don't want Soul Stealer. Let's say I don't want a lot of Soul Stealer. Or Efficiency 1. Or... Mm, there's a lot of ones here that are kind of useless, aren't there? For example, you can't have Frugal and Charging on the same wand. Therefore, that's kind of a useless enchantment. Uh, let's even say two sharpness threes are useless, because I have a sharpness four book somewhere. Alright, so let's say I didn't want any of these. If the concept worked, I can very easily chuck all the books that I don't like in here. They will all get drained at the same time. And if it worked, six books should show up right here. I somehow still have Soul Stealer 3. So yes, we now have 5 books and a Fire Shard in our Ender Chest. Is that good or bad? So there goes the Soul Stealer book, right? Yes. And now there should be... A 6th book in here, like, after a while? Or did I do that wrong? Oh, there it is! So all those books got converted down into Energy. Energy that is fueling the Matter Fabricator. Right. Awesome. Okay, great. And that means that anything else that I shove into here, tools, wise, or anything, will automatically get disenchanted. I should probably put a sign on that chest just to locate or just to, to make m mention that that's what's going on because I wouldn't want to accidentally disenchant everything. And disenchanting items can be important. Like, say, if I thought my goggles needed uh, an enchantment on them, and then I got the wrong one, well then, does that mean the goggles are useless and I need to make new ones? Well, not anymore! Not a bad idea, I think. Let's go put a sign on this chest, uh, on the front of it, probably, and call it, uh, Disenchant Intake Valve. Yeah. I mean, it's not a valve. But it gets the job done. Alright. So just proof of concept here. If I did happen to, like, say, put fire shards in the chest, right, they'd go in, they'd come back out unscathed because the energy absorber does not function the same way as the energy converter, right? Oh, very true. That's quite sad. Quite sad indeed. I mean, this works, but I was hoping for more. Alright, so, say for example, I wanted to get the reading enchantment, which comes with Bibliocraft and allows you to, like, read books on your shelves. Wow, that dissipation charge didn't last long enough, did it? Curse has you, weather. Is it nighttime yet so I can sleep? I'm not... Nobody's really a fan of rain in Minecraft, I don't think. <laughs> Honestly, there, there was this argument I had with some people on... Um, on the very first server I ever went on, Protocol. And they basically said... when it, there, were, there were two servers, okay? There was PvP, 
player versus player, and PvE, player versus environment. And they would always say that uh, rain should be on the PvE server because rain is a part of the environment. And sure, it sucks and it causes lag for people, but it's part of the environment and thusly it's something that we should have. And my argument was, this isn't actual rain, this is Minecraft, this is game-causing lag. Sharpness 1 is not something I need. So, froop! And gone it goes! Awesome! Alright, now I'm gonna need to go get another star, build an energy converter, and build a same setup for these fire shards, so I can have a little energy production going on. So, I will be right back, everybody. Well, let's just say pigs, cows, and other animals that might be in the near area. This is probably going to be one of the worst days of your life. Simply because I'm not even going to use any uh, any enchantments. Well, I mean, I'm not going to use any potions. We're going to see how good I am. Yep, that's what I thought. Let's go. So far, so good, I think. And now we're going to default into stab mode, because stabbing is always the best method against the wither. I need a star, and you have one. And how good am I going to kill you? How about very good? Seems to be getting a little bit of lag here, though. I think I can manage, though. Come on. He's got, like, one hit left. Let's all be honest here. Alright, so that worked out, didn't it? I think it did. Yes, it did. Okay, great. Oh, the things it takes to build an energy converter. <laughs> I'll be right back again, everybody. Alright, so to finish off this thingamajig, I'm going to need two more tesseracts. Turn them into item tesseracts so that uh, the chain works. <laughs> Probably need to build some more ender chests, don't I? I need to think about that for a minute. Do I actually need... Te like another ender chest type setup. Maybe I only need one, because here's the magic energy converter, and it only outputs 24 EU per tick. But it holds a lot, and it also does a lot. So let's, first of all, get these Tesseracts set up. I think I've basically memorized their uh, formula right now. Uh-oh. In reverse, apparently. Lovely. That's okay, though. All you need is a couple pneumatic servos, which are placed in the bottom. Grab your unattuned tesseracts, grab some tin. We're making some item ones, so we're going to need four silver ingots, but not a problem. In my nice little finished off thingy chest, we've got plenty of resources. Now, if it's 24 EU per tick, and these fire shards, how much energy do they generate, you think? Probably a lot. That means we don't need to be filling it with, like, energy all the time. There we go. Two Tesseracts. But where do we want to put this thing? Hmm. That's a very, very good question. I could hook it up into the second area. Like, the second side. Because everything's always got more than one side, of course. I could hook it up right here. That seems like a bad idea. The thing to consider is where is the output going? Because fire shards, when they go through here, turn into dull shards. Right? That's the main purpose of this this thing. This is going to be like a generator, right? Where, where do we want the, the power this thing generates to go? And then, of course... Okay, how is my power system going, actually? Let's, let's have a look. I should have... Oh, it's right there on the shelf. No, not you. You. You, you reader. Yes. Whoops. Still a hole in the floor. We'll get to that. Okay. So how much power is honestly being generated in some of these areas of my base? That's a very, very good question to have. Uh, the best way to think about this, I think, is to like just go to where the most things are and examine them. So right here... It's getting 277 EU per tick on this end. How about here? Oh, that's not actually... Okay, we're going to need a break in the wall here. <laughs> My bad. I thought I'd converted most of these things into the... Uh... There we go. 
Yes, yes. So, how much power is coming out of this one? 440. It's a bit more than 227, isn't it? Of course, here's the thing. There are limits to what power is doing, right? These all here are just the ones that can generate low voltage. These are the medium voltage, and everything down there is high voltage getting pumped directly. Now, if I was to examine some of my other areas in my base, would it all work out? That's the question. I think it would. I think it would have worked out if I attached it to this, the low voltage line, and kind of gave that an extra power boost. I think that would be okay. Let's have a look underneath. Because my concern is, if I've got some, like, MFEs going all the time, and they can only generate 120 ADU per tick, and how are they doing? One is empty, one is full. Looks like it could honestly use some more, then. Some more juice, that is. So, if we're going to hook this up to the low voltage line, which, of course, works. It only generates 24, even though it can store a ton. We want to hook this sucker up somewhere over here. Somewhere. Maybe in the wall. Maybe even on top of the array itself. Because these uh, glass fiber cables really don't mind, like, where your things are coming from. It's been a while since I needed the the, uh, the Tesla coil up here, too. I might want to remove that. Do I have my Omni Ranch on me? No, I don't. Okay. So. Here's what we're going to do. I don't need the Omni Ranch. We're just going to put this magic energy converter down. All right, and it looks like any kind of generator... If we put in a single one of these, it generates a lot of fire. Let's chuck in the nine of them and see how good that does. Is it just going to wait until uh, until the 51 fire has generated all the way, perhaps? I think that's how it works. I haven't actually examined this block before. I think it's going to need to take all the fire out. So that there's room in there. Right? Interesting. I mean, it's got... It's hooked up to the EU current, so that should be fine. I think all that means is that I need to grab this item Tesseract. Put her there. Tell it uh, to be... I think I need to add another current, don't I? We'll say 356. We'll name it. Uh, what do we name it? Mm, not energy drain. This is uh, energy conv. Yeah, that works. Oh, did that already shut off all the fire? Huh. So eventually this is all going to work out. Yes. I also need to tell this thing to only do receive only. Good. Very, very good. So this is going to work out, isn't it? It's going to run off of fire. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, then the only thing I need to do now is maybe... Yes. This part of the uh, Tesla coil isn't exactly connected to anything, so I can just simply move it onto the other dais. Or the other side, I mean. Let's hope I don't accidentally turn the sucker on. We'll set the the frequency to... Where is it? There's a lot more on these than there used to be. It should be called F-coils, yes. No, not Ender Farm Kill. F-coils. Yes. 398. Good. Alright, next step. One wooden transport pipe here, which is going to pull all the dull shards back out of it. Right? Or whatever else I'm going to be using. In this case, yes, definitely dull shards. So, where do I want the dull shards to be going is a good, good question. Do I want to be using another Tesseract setup? Probably not. Probably just another Ender chest to deal with it. 
would be fine. And then every once in a while, I would just empty the ender chest into a barrel. Or maybe just putting it directly into a barrel if I don't plan to be sucking any other energy out. Let's think about that for a minute. Hmm. I don't know. That would be very simple, wouldn't it? Take out the middleman immediately. For now, we'll set up this Tesseract again. Owner only and energy conv. Yes, good. Send only. Good, good. Now we're going to need two Otarctic gates to finish this setup up. Antarctic gates, not regular ones. All right, so we're going to need to tell it to make gates. But it, it, it understands what I need. <laughs> All right, so final steps here. Make sure that this is set up to do fire shards. And think about where these dull shards should be going. They could go to an ender chest. I could make another one of those and just pump them directly into here. That wouldn't be bad, would it? Then I could... Well, you can only pump things into a barrel from the top, can't you? Hmm. That's true enough, isn't it? I'm guessing that the, uh, the fire comb thing hasn't had much success yet. Has it? Well, we've gotten about 20 more than I used to have, right? So there's that. And when you consider that my public network here is probably going to get backed up with dull shards or yeah with blaze powder since that's also a byproduct i'm going to be needing to walk around quite a bit to get rid of some of these things but that's fine i don't, I don't mind all that much if there's extra byproduct that i might use in the future and in the end that is simply how it looks magically energy converter fire shards dumping them into through this gate the same chest that everything else goes into as seen earlier. Oh, and by the way, I found my charm of keeping three in that other chest. So that's great. Very, very interesting. Basically, supplementary magical power. And if I so choose to, say, not want um, chest plates that look weird like this, or pants like that, or these other funky-like swords, I can just throw them now into this chest down here and turn it into more power. How awesome is that? So let's just try it out. Don't need this, don't need that, or this, or that, and it's not gonna break the system at all. I can come over here. You know, now I think about it. Yeah, and if there's too much, as sometimes there is, it'll just spit them out over here, I think. It's probably best to do this one at a time. But it does work. <laughs> you can get ironwood legs that are no longer enchanted. It's pretty funny. Hmm. I suppose you could use an auto crafting table to perpetually use ironwood to make enchanted legs. And then perpetually do it. That Wouldn't that be ridiculous though? <laughs> Bit too ridiculous for my tastes. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode about the magic energy converters. <laughs> They're a bit expensive, but I suppose they do work as another alternate power source. And uh, I'm all for that. So uh, see you all next time.